Welcome to the MBS Show, Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Roman Sanzo, and we got a review for you this week. And in today's review, we are going to review the My Little Pony, Ponyville Mystery Comic, issue number 5. In the issue, the Cutie Mark Crusaders try to track down a priceless artifact that was stolen from Songbird Serenade. So, the, the, uh, this is the final issue for the Ponyville Mystery uh, series and it has been a very interesting ride from start to end. From our, uh, from our intrepid heroes uh, stumbling across a mystery to kind of dealing with something huge right now. So, uh, let's get into first impressions. So first impressions are, well, I kind of like the comic. I really enjoy the twists and turns, the way that the CMCs solve the mystery. And I, I like the challenges that the CMC faced for this uh, adventure of theirs or mystery. Uh, but in essence, it's kind of one of those things where it's a big, mm, how do I put this? It's, oh man, uh, if I were to talk about it now, it would be spoilerish. But um, my first impressions are I really enjoyed it. And the way that the CMCs dealt with the mystery was really good. So anyway, if you have not read this comic, pause here and go do so. <coughs> Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the comic. So let's get right into it. So we start out the comic with the CMCs walking through Ponyville. And the town is uh, getting ready to welcome Songbird Serenade. They're putting up flyers, banners, um, those ribbons they put on the town square or the town hall and so on. Uh, we get to see that every pony in town is really getting ready. Like they're uh, cleaning it up, they're decorating, they're they're just really excited for Songbird Serenade to come because the last time that a celebrity pony came along was Countess Colartura. But anywho, uh, the CMCs are walking around Ponyville just admiring the hard work that everybody's putting in and uh, the CMCs are just excited for Songbird Serenade to come. And uh, Scootaloo mentioned something. It's awesome. Uh, it's so awesome. Songbird Serenade is coming back to Ponyville. And I'm trying to remember, did she came to Ponyville before? Like, did she? I don't remember. And this is one of those parts where either I'm forgetting something or there's something I'm missing or the original concept for this one was... It was supposed to be Countess Colartura coming back to Ponyville. But since uh, we, or they have um, Songbird Serenade, they use her instead. So it's one of those things where um, in the Milo Pony universe, there's um, multiple singing celebrities. Uh, there's Songbird, there's um, Countess Colatura and both of them are kind of big stars it's just that which one do you pick and in this scenario here uh, Scootaloo's line coming back to Ponyville is kind of confusing if I'm uh, not wrong but if I'm wrong and if she did appear in Ponyville once before then yeah that line is right if not then kind of a big mistake, I guess. But that's besides the point. And as the CMCs walk past Carousel Boutique, they hear someone screaming, asking for help. Obviously, it's Rarity, and they hit in. Uh, Sweetie Belle comes in and asks, what's the matter? What, 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 what's wrong? What's wrong? And Rarity just mentions that... Uh, Songbird Serenade's assist, temporary assistant, Onyx, 
are Ador of Doros, some, something like that. Ador is coming and is needing her services to create costumes and whatnot. And as they talk, the doorbell rings and pops in Countess... No, no count, oh man, this is going to hurt me in the long run. Uh, Songbird Serenade's uh, assistant, Onyx... Onyx, what was the name again? Onyx... Uh, Ardor. Ardor, okay. Onyx Ardor. Uh, she is f- flanked by two bodyguard ponies and uh, she talks to Rarity, thanking her for her time and on short notice, uh, Onyx here mentions that uh, Countess... So no, did I mention before this is going to hurt me? Songbird's usual assistant is down with the flu and... Her regular costume design is also ill. So that's why we have Onyx here instead of the quote-unquote regular assistant. But anywho, um, like Onyx mentioned, she is in place of the regular assistant and also asking for Rarity's help because of the regular costume designer is ill and couldn't make it to create the costume for Songbird. So, song, uh, Rarity, say, uh, <laughs> so Rarity says she'll do the contract, no problem. Uh, she'll help in any way she can. And Onyxia reveals a priceless... Uh, what was the word? <laughs> let, me, let me see. Um, she would like the costume to be influenced by this treasured family heirloom. A statue is uh, sorry. A statue that is unlike anything I've ever seen before, the Abyssinian alabaster. So it's basically a bird that's covered in jewels. Yep, looks really gaudy. But anywho, with that, Rarity says she'll do it, and uh, she got something in mind already, and. The project needs to be done in two days. <laughs> oh boy, that is going to be a challenge for Rarity. But she can do it, no problem. So anywho, uh, Onyxia leaves the heirloom at Carousel Boutique, which Rarity puts in a trunk and lock it with lock and keys. And yeah, with that, Rarity kind of slump on the ground saying to herself two days and yeah she got her work cut out for her the next morning we see the cmc's walk around ponyville looking at the awesome work that the town's people did and by this time around there's already a bunch of people from all over equestria coming to well look at the awesome concert that songbird is going to put on and if you're reading this at home or uh, watching this with me, uh, do keep an eye out for some characters. I mean, uh, it feels like we might be seeing them again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, anywho, uh, as the CMCs head to Carousel Boutique, they hear a shriek inside. They barge in and see a panicking rarity panic <laughs> for lack of a better word and she mentions that oh no oh no the heirloom is gone it's gone oh no and i am going to pause here so anyway <coughs> the comic itself or the start of the comic is pretty awesome uh we we get something really somber something really um light we we see the ponies doing their thing and we just get a short summarization of or not really summarization but a short synopsis of what's going to happen um we find out that yeah songbird's coming to town and she's going to hold a concert and whatnot all right cool cool 
And we are introduced to some key players like Onyx and she's kind of the temporary assistant and so on. Then we're introduced to the um, heirloom, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, um, all in all, it was a really good setup and a really good uh, yeah, it's a really good setup and it's a really good starting point for the adventure to kind of lead on its way because obviously uh, with any mystery novel or mystery comic of whatever it is, there's going to be the setup and there's going to be the crisis. And the crisis here is obviously the alabaster thing is going to be stolen. How is it stolen? We got no idea. But anywho, um, let's carry on because... I think we're going to get that explanation from Rarity now. <laughs> anyway, the CMCs look around and Sudi Bell asks what happened. So Rarity says that she was working on the costume for most of the night and um, <clears throat> she... So, sorry, um... Okay, so anyway, uh, she was working on the costume for most of the night and then uh, put it back into the trunk and lock, lock it with a padlock and key. And then she took a short rest. And when she woke up, the statue was gone. I won't say statue, the heirloom. So this heirloom was gone. And now she's panicking and she's crying and blabbering and she got no idea what could have happened obviously somebody stole it but how did they do it and so on so that's the mystery the CMC said that no problem we got this we're going to find who stole the statue and Rarity asked do you really think you can do it I mean like right now it's kind of chaotic and the CMC says, positive, we can do this. And yeah, like we... we <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, and City Bell just tells Rarity, you just go finish the costume and we will get back the heirloom. No problem. So the CMC head out and ask the most important question, where do they even start? With the, uh, with the panel showing... A bunch of pony are in Ponyville. So this is already a big challenge for them because they can't go walking around asking each and every pony questions. Like, that That would be very suspicious and that would be very mad. I do like this one panel where we get to see uh, dragons, yaks, and changelings are in town. And that means there is this huge presence in Ponyville um, and it really states how awesome this is like a, a, a mega celebrity is coming to town everybody's going there and so on and also uh, it comes or oh, sorry also it shows the challenge of what the CMCs have to face and that is how do they even deal with this because they need to solve a mystery but the pack, sorry, the town is so packed that they have no idea where to go. So they decide to do the most logical reason, and that is go to uh, Songbird's assistant, Onyx. And they decide to go to her because they want to ask her a few questions about, you know, Anybody else knows about the statue or um, know who might steal it? Because right now, they're in a pickle. Besides Rarity and the CMCs, only Miss Onyx knows where the location of the um, heirloom was hidden. So the CMCs hit to Miss Onyx and tells her that, okay, the heirloom was stolen and do you know anyone who might want to steal it? So Song sorry, 
Onyx hears this and panics for a bit because she might lose her job and that's very bad. Oh no. So she panics and hyperventilates and the CMC tries to calm her down a bit. And when the CMC is asked, do, do you know who might want to steal it and whatnot? And Miss Sonics just says, uh, it's a price of room of a major celebrity um, who wouldn't want to steal it kind of thing. And Apple Bloom just asks, yeah, but do you know any pony that really stands out? And um, Miss Sonics says, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's uh, Hulking Hoarder. Uh, he's a collector in Cantalot, and he asked me about this statue before. Uh, he's if he's here, he certainly most lead. Uh, sorry, uh, if he's here, he most certainly did it. So with that clue, the CMCs head to town to to find to try and find him. So they head to well. The, the town, um, first bumping into Twilight and asking Twilight, Hey, Twilight, you were living in Cantalot once. Do you know anybody or any pony named Hulking Horrider? And Twilight says, No, nah, I, I don't know, but I need to take care of business and make sure the town is um doing well because I'm the princess of quote-unquote Ponyville, which is kind of strange. But yeah, I, I need to make this Sound perfectly great. Yay. Bye, girls. And with that, the girls says that, okay, um, Twilight doesn't know. And that's good because we don't want, we do, we don't want to incite panic. So we have a new, <laughs> I won't say musical, but we have a montage of the CMCs asking every, um, every pony from Cantalot. Um, asking like, yeah, do you know Hulking Horde and so on? And the, each pony they talked to couldn't really answer them because I, I guess they don't know. Suddenly, um, they hear a voice asking, I heard you're looking for me. And yes, this Hulking Hoarder, uh, he drags the CMCs into a room or a building and glad it's sugar cube corner and was this a hulking hoarder um talks to them about what he knows and what he wants um so but like i said um they kind of compare notes and the CMC asks, did you stole the heirloom? And Hulking Hoarder says, if I would have stole it, I won't be here anymore. So it wasn't me. It could be somebody else who got the chance to stole it before me. So with that, it seems that we got this kind of mystery that there's more than one person in town who might want to steal the heirloom. So, before we leave the CMCs, um, Horder here ordered a dessert called the Pinky Special. And local to Ponyville knows that the Pinky Special is not something that you want to partake on your own. So, when it arrives we see that the pinky special is a multi-layer dessert with a cake i think that could be red velvet a pie top up with another cake top up with another pie and decorated with strawberries cupcakes and lollipops and one of the most funniest lines here is, well, not really, but is Pinky asking, would you like a spoon or shovel? So we see the CMC leave and 
in the background we see that yeah, um, Horde is using the shovel. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, much awesomeness. So as we move on, we see that the crowd is getting bigger. More creatures come along. Uh, we got we see a griffin, dragon, yaks, and so on. So definitely, uh, this Ponyville is getting really really busy. So the girls say that okay, um, we we need to get back to the clubhouse because right now it's just too crowded and we can't really think. So they head to the clubhouse, asking, "Do we really have any more suspect in our investigation?" And as they open the door, they see that oh no, the clubhouse has been ransacked, post. Like, uh, what tables have been turned, chairs have been flipped, and a lot of stuff has been overturned. So why they look at the scenario? Oh, sorry, why they look at the place? Suddenly, a rope ties around them, and it's revealed that there was a unicorn in the clubhouse, uh, turning the place. The unicorn asks, "Where is it?" And the CMCs are kind of blurred because, like, what? Like, what are you asking for? And he's asking for the heirloom. And the CMC says that, now we don't have it and we're also looking for it. The unicorn says that it's got to be here. She said she stashed it here. And... The CMC just says, honestly, dude, we got no idea where it is and we ain't lying, man. So, this unicorn, uh, green in, uh, what you call this, fur with a frizzy brown hair, uh, says that somebody's lying. She double-crossed me and ran away. We got no idea who his name is and the CMC's were not freed from their um, tying up. Yes. So, Apple, sorry, uh, Sweetie Bell tells, no, um, Scootie Lou tells Sweetie Bell to use her magic to untie them. And she did. As they um, open the door, they still see the pony running towards town. So, they follow after him for a bit and they lost him in the crowd and one of the few cool things is that we see the hippogriffs yay so with that they got no idea where he is their only lead their only clue gone so they head back to carousel boutique and rarity opens the door i am glad that glad to see the girls because uh, she has kind of interesting news and that is the so songbird is coming to Ponyville a day early and that is a huge huge problem and her train is due in Ponyville any minute now so for now Rarity can't leave the shop because she needs to get her work done so she sends sweetie bell and the cmc's to go pick songbird up so with that they head to the train station and as they arrive it seems that the train has uh yeah it seems that the train has arrived and a lot of passengers are coming out so, as they take a look-see, looking around for Songbird, they notice there's Onyx. Onyx Ador. And they're wondering, like, what is she doing here? Skurulu says, probably meeting with Songbird Serenade. And it's logical because she is her assistant, so she should be there to 
um, greet her and whatnot. But Sweetie Belle points out that, wait, with all the luggage? That's not right. And Apple Bloom just says that, I think it's time to have another chat with Onyx Ador. So the girls confront Onyx, and Onyx is startled by this, and asking them, uh, what are you doing here? And the CMC says, we're here to meet Songbird Serenade. With that, um, Onyx says, what? She's not due until tomorrow. And the girl just says she moved up her arrival to today. As her loyal assistant, we'd expect you to know that. Ah, the plot thickens, I see. <laughs> so, with that, we are greeted to Songbird Serenade. And yay, we we get to see uh, John Travolta and Samuel L. Jackson Pony. Yay. So, the pony of the station are really excited to see her and whatnot. And Sweetie Belle greets Songbird. Uh, telling her that she is, or they are the representative for Kersa Boutique, and uh, her sister Rarity would like to come and improve the costume design. So with that, they head to Kersa Boutique, along with uh, Onyx. So as they arrive in Pony, sorry, uh, as they arrive in uh, Carousel Boutique. Uh, Songbird inspects on all the costume designs and she says that, oh my goodness, it's really beautiful and I really like it. And at this point, Rarity confesses to uh, her heirloom saying that uh, it was stolen and she got no idea she got no idea how it's it got stolen and how it's missing <laughs> with that uh we see that miss onyx behind songbird panicking and the cmc is rummaging around uh miss onyx's bag which is a big foul because that's that's not what you do but as they opened the bag, they found the uh, heirloom. Oh my goodness! It was in her bag! <sighs> and they pointed out that Onyx was the one that stole it. Rarity asked, how did you know? And here's the mystery breakdown because besides them, uh, Onyx was the only pony who knew where the statue was locked up. And that and that that is and that that means pony who mm, sorry. And then that mean pony who tied them up at the clubhouse, uh, clubhouse uh, mentioned she, uh, he was double crossed by she by a she. So this kind of all adds up to the mystery of who done it and whatnot. So, with that, um, Songbird was a bit dis uh, is very disappointed in this and how could she have done this to her? And Onyx just mentions that, oh please, you have. Equestria at your hooves. I figure I was sorry. I figured it was time for me to cash out and enjoy the high life for once. And barge in the green pony, whose name is Jagger Clamps. He was the one that stole the statue, and told him that they could have a better life for the both of them. So it seems that. Jagger Clamp is well, is being used by Onyx and whatnot. <coughs> so, as they try to um, talk about the situation, 
um, and whatnot comes in a uh, <laughs> hulking horde um, just popping in saying that oh, I want the statue Ooh, look at the exquisite detail and wait a second it's just a knockoff and this sparks anger from Miss Onyx saying that what? You told me that statue was priceless. And someone says, Yeah, it's priceless to me. My great grandpony won it at a, for me at a carnival when I was a little filly. It has a special place in my heart. And I just love how this all wraps up. And yeah, with, with that, the, the CMCs didn't really saw this coming. And yeah, with that, they all got ready and concert plays. And we see that, yay, um, <coughs> Songbird is performing in front of hundreds and probably thousands of ponies. With that, Almost, uh, com- uh, comic almost ending. Uh, Songbird on stage introduce, um, uh, Ponyville's most, uh, three of Ponyville's most beloved citizen and ask for a round of applause for the Kunima Crusaders that, uh, that make, uh, make the Kunima Crusaders super sleuth. And with that, comic ends. And what a way to end the comic. What a way to end the comic. And with that, the comic ends. Okay. So let's get to my final thoughts and overall review. I enjoy this comic a lot. Like, it's, it's tone is serious, but with a lighthearted ending because as it goes on, like, as it starts, we don't really uh, we introduced to the heirloom, and the heirloom is a priceless artifact. And we, we, we got no idea the monetary value or whatnot. Someone just says that it's really important to her. And as it goes down, it's revealed that the statue itself is just a trinket. It's nothing more than a prize won at a carnival, a cheap knockoff. But like men- like uh, Songbird mentioned, uh, it holds a lot of um, what you call this sentimental value to her. And saying that the great grand pony got it for her, that has to be something. I mean, uh, how do I put this? It's it's something like your. Someone, de- someone that you love dearly, bought you something trivial, but to you it's very important. And this is the scenario there, and I can, I can relate. I, I can appreciate that. And yeah, <laughs> honestly speaking, if the thing was stolen or gone, it ain't going to hurt Songbird financially, but it's just going to hurt her emotionally. And yeah, I mean, it's it's really important to her on that aspect. But overall, the comic was great. The comic was great. I I like the story. I like how uh, it unfolded itself. But in terms of a mystery novel and whatnot, it was kind of how do I put this? It was kind of simple. But granted, the audience for the comic was mostly catered for children, so everything kind of laid out for them. I mean, if you really want to take a look, see at a more mystery kind of novel where you uh, figure out and discover, I'm guessing you should go read um, mystery novels and whatnot. Or maybe probably find some mystery detective comics. But for what it is, it's good, it's awesome, and I highly enjoyed it. But anywho, um, yes, those are my final thoughts and 
overall perspective i'm sorry overall perspective on the comic series so what would i give the series as a whole honestly i really enjoyed it it has its problems but the way that it's done is really good so i'll give it a 4 out of 5 for the series as a whole um Granted, the comic or the mysteries were not that hard to solve. Um, as you heard in previous episodes, uh, Terra, this, <laughs> Terra found who did it in the first three pages. I had a little more time this, um, figuring out who was who and so on. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where the comic was, Really awesome, really awesome. So let's wrap things up. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thembsgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitch Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on punjablive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank... <coughs> sorry. <coughs> I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Master of Lag, and Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. Thank you so much, guys. So anyway... I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya!